Hello all. Today we will use animation notifies to add particle and sound effects to our player's run animation, making ground cracks wherever they step. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump in. In a new level, let's open up our content drawer and we'll create two new assets. Right click, and first we will select material, left click, I will call this M underscore floor crack. I will right click and I will create a new Niagara system. And I will do a new system from selected emitter, which lets us use a template as a base. And I'll scroll down to the single looping particle and use this as our base. I'll select finish. And then I will call this NS underscore uh, foot step system. Great. Now let's bring in a texture. I've downloaded a crack texture from the internet. This is a PNG, so it only will be this black texture and there is an alpha map. So I can drag and drop this into my content drawer. And then here it is. If I double click this, I can see the checkerboard showing that it has an alpha map. And now let's create our material. If I open up my material I've created, double clicking, I can drag my texture in. I could also create a texture sample by right clicking and typing texture sample with that selected, or if it's not selected, I could browse to it here. And I will drag the RGB value into base color. And I'm going to down here in the blend mode, I'm going to change this value from opaque to translucent. Then I will drag out of the alpha channel. And I will say multiply. I will right click down here and I will type dynamic parameter. And I'm going to change index zero over here to opacity. I will drag from this little red node into the B. And I will drag from the multiply into opacity. So now you can see that it's used this alpha map to our opacity node. So we see that this as a plane is see-through. And then we will use this dynamic pr parameter in our Niagara system to dynamically edit the material of the particle. Now we can start editing our Niagara system. Let's open it up by double clicking. And we can see here that we have one particle. We're going to use this as the base and edit these properties and add some additional ones to give us the effect we want. First, let's start by selecting the sprite renderer. We're going to use a mesh renderer for this situation. And it will give us this default little arrow gizmo. We're going to select a new mesh. So with mesh renderer selected, up in the top right, you'll see it says meshes, and we'll find that little gizmo. So I will drop down and type plane. We'll use this asset, shape underscore plane. And it says enable material overrides. We'll select this checkbox. In this next line, we'll hit this little plus sign that says add element. We'll drop this down. And here we're going to take our floor crack material that we've just created and we'll apply it here. And so let's make sure this is saved over here. And now we should see it properly represented in our editor. So to start, we can see that we now have a mesh in the environment. It's oriented in the same way that the plane is, which is the Z up. And let's change some additional attributes. First, we're going to change our emitter state we're going to select emitter state here under emitter update where it says life cycle mode. We'll change this from system to self. And now we're going to add two effects. So what we want to happen is when the player will step, we're going to spawn the particle and then it's going to slowly fade out, dissipating the translucency of the material as well as slightly scaling down at the end as it disappears. So let's add some attributes for that. So under particle update, 
I'll select the, I'll, I'll left click on this plus sign and I will say dynamic material parameters. If you notice, you'll see your mesh initially disappear. That's because the opacity value is initially set to zero. So once I set this to one by default, um, it will, you know, make it, make it appear again. And I'm going to click on this downwards arrow over here and I will say curve. I will say float from curve, which now you can see it's basically over the lifetime of the particle. It's following the value of this curve and decreasing over time, which is making the opacity fade out. So we'll use this one as a sort of drop off. Um, so it starts high and we'll actually kind of just make it pop in like that. And so I just right clicked and added a new key by saying, by right clicking on the line saying add key. And I'm actually going to unlock the, the, the snapping. And so now you'll see it'll kind of pop in and then fade out. And we could drag this to maybe give it a longer fade uh, or just, you know, leave it as is. Let's now add our scaling effect. So under particle update, we can left click the green arrow and add scale mesh size. And you'll notice it has disappeared. We can fix this by going to initialize particle and where it says mesh scale mode unset, change this to uniform. And now we'll see it reappear. So for scale mesh size, let's go to where it says scale factor, drop down this arrow over here and type float. And we'll use vector from float because this is uniform. We can control all three vectors, uh, axes of the mesh simultaneously. I just find that easier. So I'll hit return. And then in this down arrow again, right here, I will type float from curve. And now you can see it because this downwards linear, uh, curve here is just sort of consistent. It's just scaling it over time. Don't love that. So let's use this sort of drop off. Um, even that's, you know, not amazing. So I'll drag this final key up and I'm going to drag this and we'll just edit this a little bit. So that's not ideal, but you know, this isn't art. This is just for learning how to do the br the blueprint. Um, so let's actually change this. I'm going to change this key to 0.8. That's a little better. Awesome. Let's compile this and save this and let's on particle spawn and one last element. We're going to qu click this, let, uh, green plus sign. I'm going to say, uh, initial mesh orientation. If it doesn't appear, you can search it. Um, and let's change this to orient to vector and it has our Z, but let's right here where it says rotation. I'm going to click this. I'm going to drop down over here in this menu. I'm going to say random range vector, and I'm going to zero out the X and the Y and change this Z value to 360. So it will rotate randomly zero to 360 degrees and it's a vertical vector. Let's hit compile and save. Just because let's add an additional system, right click, add emitter, omnidirectional burst, drag this up. I'm going to take the shape location, just change it to, uh, let's make it five. So there's just a little, little sparkle when we, uh, like a, like a little dust cloud. Um, and now let's add our animation notifies. All right, let's add our anim notify functionality. So in our content drawer, uh, if you type run, you'll find the run animations for the mannequin. Note that there is one for the male mannequin and one for the female. The female has the prefix MF. The male is MM. So know which one you're doing right now by default the female animation is used. So we'll use that uh, because there is a female mesh for the, the third person character. So let's open this up. You can see already that there's some sort of notify happening here where it says right and left each time that foot touches the ground. And let's add our own particle notifies. 
So in the under notifies, I'll select where it says track and I'll say add notify track and I'll call this particles. And so roughly where these keys exist, I'll right click, say add notify and then say play Niagara particle effect. So now it will basically every time this key is passed in the animation, do this uh, thing I'm telling it to do, which in this situation is play Niagara effect. And let's, let's reference our effect. So I can say uh, NS underscore footstep system. And we're going to do it on the bone. So because this is the right foot, let's search foot. And then we want foot underscore R and I will do an offset of negative five. So when this plays through, you'll see it sort of pop down that, uh, that mesh there. And so let's add also a sound. So I'll add an additional notify track. I'll say sound. I'll right click and I'll say add notify, play sound. I'm gonna, I'm gonna left mouse click this up here, I'm going to use the explosion sound effect and I'm going to turn this way down to 0.05 and I'm going to change the pitch to two, make it sound a little bit more like a footstep. I'm actually going to make this 0 0.025 up here in the volume. And so now let's add a, another notify over here at right click, add notify play Niagara particle effect. I'll select this. Let's make this uh, on the foot underscore L. I'm again going to add a location offset in the Z. So a vertical of negative five units. And I'm going to just browse to my uh, Niagara system in the content browser and then use the left arrow to reference it. And I will select the explosion sound effect with my uh, left mouse, control C, then I'm going to left click in this area and control V so that I can copy that notify. And I'm going to marquee select, uh, these four, and I'm just going to control V by left clicking into the track like this. So I'm left clicking here and then I'm doing control V. So now you should see boom, 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 boom. Each time the player steps, there is a um, effect on the ground. And let's test this out in the viewport. All right, in my map, I will right click, say play from here. And we'll see that once I start running, with each step, I will hear a sound in my own headphones. And I will see that a footstep, uh, the sort of decal I've created will appear on the floor as well as the little dust particles. This is obviously a very basic integration where the effects are not super spectacular, but I'm sure you can imagine more advanced effects would have a dramatic impact on your player's run and walk cycle. I hope if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a comment and let me know what you'd be interested in learning about next. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 content. Thanks all.